In the present video, I will be explaining another measure of variation that is called the population variance. Imagine that we have a set of data and all these data are the data from the populations. Obviously, a good idea to measure the variation is to get what is the distance between each value and the mean. So get, get the mean first. So you need to add together all these values. If we add together all the values, the, 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 the answer is 40. And then, because this is the whole population, I'm going to use this letter for the population mean. And this will be adding together all the numbers divided by the total number of data. So in this case, will be 40 divided by 8. Because we have 8 data. So the mean, the population mean is 5. But then, the difference, so it will be a good idea to put the difference in another column to get the difference between the value and, and the mean will be just sub make a subtraction, 3 minus 5, the answer is minus 2, 3 minus 5, the answer is minus 2, a minus 5, the answer is, is 3, etc. So we can compute all the difference between each value and the mean. And then add together, but we already saw that when we were explaining about the mean deviation, the answer is always zero. So the, the difference of the mean of the difference of the average of the difference is always zero divided by a equals zero. It's always zero in any case. So this we already saw that this is a bad idea for getting the variation. So the variation cannot be computed just thinking in the difference. So a good idea in the mean deviation we were thinking in, in this way, we put each value positive. So we use the absolute value of each number to make them positive. If we make them positive, then for sure that's not going to be zero. So that's what we are going to do So it, it, it to compute the variance. Again, we are going to do the same. We are going to be thinking in the difference between the value and the mean, but we are going to do something to put these numbers positive. And a, a way to make a number positive is, you, is just squaring the number. So just multiplying the number by itself. So if we have this set of data, that is, will be the whole population. I will be adding together all the numbers. Again, I will be computing the mean. The mean will be 5. But then, instead of thinking of just difference, I will be thinking in the difference squares. So the deviation square. So any time, for example, here, 3 minus 5, I get the number negative 2, but any time that I get the difference, I'm going to square. So negative 2 squared will be 4, will be the number that I'm going to type here. 3 minus 5 is negative minus 2, I'm going to type square 4. 8 minus 5 is 3, 3 squared is 9, I'm going to type 9. 9 minus 5 is 4, 4 squared is 16. 6 minus 5 is 1, 1 square is 1, 4 minus 5 is negative 1, but because I'm squaring, I'm going to get a positive number, is 1, positive 1, 4 minus 5, again, negative 1, I square is 1, 3 minus 5, negative 2, a square is 4. Now that I have all the deviations squared, so what I need to do is just add together all this, 4 plus 4, 8 plus 9, 17, plus 16, 13, uh, 33, 34, 35, 36, and 4 is 40. It's a coincidence that it's the same 40 of the yeah? So, but, and then to get the variance, the variance will be the average of all this the deviation squared. So it's, it will be all adding together all these deviation squared and divided by the total number of, of, of values. And in this case, there are eight values. So it will be 40 over A, and it's again 5. It's a coincidence that in this case, the variance and the mean are the same. That is something that could happen, but it's not happened so frequently. We can now define what is the population variance. The population variance will be the arithmetic mean of the average of the square deviations. Deviations, of course, from the population mean. The formula will be this. So we are going to use the, the Greek letter sigma 
and put the square, uh, put it as, uh, writing as a square as the symbol of the variance. Then the the this variance will be the average of all these uh, deviations from the mean. This is the population mean. So this mu is the mean of the whole population. The n is the population size or the number of elements in the population. And this x minus mu square are the square of the deviations. Here is, there is a, a problem, an example. The ages of all patients in the isolation ward of the Mountain View Hospital are 35, 24, 11, 42, and 23 years. Determine the population variance. To solve this problem, we already have the formula. So we, it will be better if we, if we put the data in a column. So in this way, I, I prefer to work in columns. To, and we notice that from the formula, we need to compute first the mean. Then the mean will be the sum of all the data divided by the total number of the population. You need to notice that this is the a population. I mean, we know that this is a population because they tell, they tell me that it's the age of all the patients in the isolation ward of Mountain View Hospital. So they are all the elements that we are interested in. So these are, this is a population. So for that reason, we are computing the population variance. Okay, so we noted that we need to add first. So we add together all the numbers here, and, and the answer will be it's 35 plus 24 plus 11 plus 42 plus 23. I'm using my calculator, and the answer is 135. So 135 so is the number that I'm going to put here to compute the mean. So it will be 135 divided by 5. And don't forget that the unit here is years. So 135 divided by 5, the answer is 27. So we have 27 years. Yeah. Okay, so now that we have this, now I'm going to, we, we can compute this, this variance. Yeah. And remember, to compute the variance, we need to do first the sum of all the deviations squared. So we need to find the deviation of each number. So for that reason, it will be a good idea to make another column. So make another column, and in this column, we are going to make the, the deviations squared. So what are, we, what are we going to do? We are going to subtract 35 minus the mean. So for example, here, 35 minus 27 equal 8, and I'm going to square the number. So after I get the difference, I square. If I use, using, using the calculator, is just making a subtraction and just pressing the key square in your calculator. Yeah? And so 35 minus 27 is 8, a square 64. 24 minus 27, when I do this, the answer is negative 3, but as soon as I, I, I press the key square, Negative 3 squared, the answer is 9. 11 minus 27 is negative 16. Yeah? Negative 15 squared, 256. Here it will be 42 minus 27. I get 15 squared, 225, 225. Then 20, 23 minus 27 is negative 4. When I square, negative 4 is 16, but I get positive. So you see, if you square, each number will be positive. Then add together all these numbers, 64 plus 9 plus 256 plus 225 plus 16, and I get the answer 570. This 570 is the number that we're going to put here at the top of this fraction. Yeah? So this sum, it will be 2,570, so I can compute now the variance. So the variance will be 570 divided by 5. And I wonder, you notice that this years is years squared. Yeah? Now the years is, is a square. Because when we are squaring here, for example, 35 plus 27, this 35 plus 27 was 8 years. 
when you square will be 64 years square. So the unit here are years square. So for that reason, when you do this, the, the unit is years square. So, so the answer will be 570 divided by 5, and this is uh, 114 years square. And that will be the answer of the variance. So the variance will be a good measure of variation, but they have something that nobody likes it. So the, the units are really weird. But what does it mean years square? Anytime that you get the, the variance, the units, the original units will be a square. For that reason, people were thinking in something. Why don't get the square root of this? And when you get the square root of this, you get something that is called the standard deviation. In this case, we, because, because we are using the whole population, we call it the population standard deviation. And the population standard deviation will be the square root of this. Yeah? The square root of this number here. So it will be the square root of the variance. So the square root of this number. And this, this is, if we remember, this, what is here is the formula of the variance inside of the root. So better to, to type that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. And that's it. Because if you already compute the variance, the only that you need to do is just compute the, num the, the square root of the, of the variance. So the square root of the variance is the square root of 114 years square. Obviously, when you get the square root, now this square is going to disappear here. So that gives you this value. Sigma, sigma will be 10.68 years. And this will be the answer for the standard deviation. So, so far, we have covered two measures of variation. One that is called the variance, and the other is called the standard deviation. But the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. Let's see another example. An office of fine-tuned telecommunications hired seven trainee engineers this year. Their monthly starting salary are like are here. Yeah? and we need to find the population variance and the standard deviation. So we know that it will be a good idea if we put all these numbers in a column. So let's do that. And then I see the formula that we have for the population variance. And I know that in the formula appears the mean. So I need to compute the mean first. So the mean will be the sum of all the values divided by n. So I need to add all these values. So I'm going to type here the sum. So I need to add together, use your calculator, add together all these numbers. And I get in my calculator 38,395. This is the sum that I'm going to type here. So it will be, the mean will be 385, 388,395 divided by 7, um, because we have 7 data. Eh? So if we do that, the answer is 5,485. This is the value of the mean, and we need to compute the, the difference between each value and the mean. For that reason, it will be a good idea to make another column. In this column, I'm going to type the mean, the difference between the value and the mean, but I'm going to square it immediately using my calculator. For example, for this, I'm going to type 5355 divided by 5485. When I get the answer, I press my, the key is square, and I found that the answer is 16,900. Let's do it with this number now, with the second one. 5,650 minus 5,485, I get the answer, I square the answer in my calculator, and I get 27,225. Let's do it with the second, the, the second, the, the third uh, value here. 5,423 uh, 
minus 5,485. I have the answer in the screen. Now I press the key square uh, and they get five, sorry, 3,844. 5,534 minus 5,485 and then a square. And when I square, I get 2,401. 5,468 minus 5,485. Then after you get the answer, a square, and I get 289. 5,289 minus 5,485. When you get the answer, a square, and I get 38,416. And then 5,676 minus the mean. Then I square when I get the answer, and I get 30,481. Now, Add together all these numbers using your calculator and type the number here. Yeah? So 16,900 plus this number, plus this, plus this, etc. And I get a 125,556. This is the sum of all the deviation squared. And this is the number that will be here at the top of this fraction. So it will be 125,556 divided by 7. The unit here was dollar, but I know when I square the difference, the, the unit will be dollar square. So this value will be in dollar square. So I divide this number by 5, and I get that is 17,936.57 dollar square. These units are too weird, yeah? but these are the units for the population variance. So we have solved the problem until here. We have computed the population variance. But we need to compute also the standard deviation. Yeah? And the standard deviation will be just getting the square root of this. Let's do this in this side of the, of the, of the screen. The, the population standard deviation. So the formula, remember the standard deviation, it will be the square root of the variance. So the square here disappears in the symbol. Yeah? And then that will be uh, this way. Yeah? Sigma will be just the square root of the variance. So you, you, you can start the problem from here. As soon as you get this number, you get the square root of this number, and this is the standard deviation. So will be the standard deviation of 17,936.57. Use your calculator for doing that. And I get that the standard deviation was $133.93. Obviously, when you get the square root of the dollar square, you get this dollar. And that concludes my explanation of what is the population variance and the standard deviation. Thank you.